Dave Smith here. So in this video I want to talk a little about uh, lighting for uh, wet plate. I've, I've said already that wet plate is an incredibly slow, uh, by which we mean insensitive uh, process. Uh, and the photographers of old would sit people down in a chair and they'd put a brace to the back of their head uh, so that uh, the head was uh, less likely to, to move because of course when we sit even if we're trying to sit still you get little micro movements of all parts of your body as your balance organs do their job um, it's called negative feedback um, so they put this brace up so that people could kind of lean their heads into and then it was easier for them to stay still um, and th th those things are still used today and I may well uh, fashion some of those myself I haven't quite decided yet um, but that's uh, an indication of how slow this process is. So the, uh, and those humongous brass lenses, you will, you've all seen photographs of them with, with a, a 35 mil film canister next to these behemoth lenses, uh, which you're probably spending about uh, three to 6,000 pounds on if you wanted to buy those these days. And they are super fast. They, they, you get something like um, F3.5, for example, uh, which for, lenses that cover these huge cameras uh, that's a very very fast lens so one way of dealing with your light is the speed of your lens and uh, on my 10 by 8 I, I bought that Fujino which is an f 4.5 um, which is not by any means super fast but it's not terribly slow either in particularly in the context of large format so that's one way but of course Without spending many thousands on these super fast lenses, uh, which I don't really want to do, uh, I don't want to be that invested in uh, in, in wet plate, um, but I do want to do it. So the, the other two lenses I've got, the barrel lenses, are F9s, and by and large, that's F8, F9 is probably what you're going to get if you're going for these large format cameras. A very common lens, for example, is the 450M uh, from Nikon, and uh, that's that's an F9 lens. So it's it's actually quite tricky to, uh, at a reasonable price, to get a lens that's going to cover. It's very fast. So the other side of the coin is pumping enough light in. Now, if, typically these things will be done outdoors and then you're using sunlight and on a bright sunny day you, you get, you're going to get exposures of uh, just a few seconds uh, so that's that's one way but if you want to shoot indoors if you want to uh, have a studio kind of setup or you want to shoot in people's homes or uh, it's a winter and you want to shoot inside then you need some artificial light and that's where things get a little tricky uh, there are many, many possibilities, um, and I haven't finished exploring this by any means. So let's go through some of these. The first is uh, flash guns. Suppose you used flash. Now flash have a reasonable amount of UV light, and let's get that clear first. The sensitivity of a uh, wet plate is in the ultraviolet and the blue. So it's a UV blue sensitive. Uh, emulsion and this was typical for quite a long time so you might have heard for example of orthochromatic film and panchromatic film so orthochromatic film was what you got in the early days of film and it's uh, green sensitive so it doesn't see the reds and neither does the UV and getting uh, photographic processes to become red sensitive was really difficult because the uh, photons at the red end of the spectrum carry much, much less energy, about half as much as those at the blue end of the spectrum and only maybe a third as much of some of the UV uh, photons. So it was a very difficult uh, process to get your film to be red sensitive. Uh, but of course the, that happened and that's when we got what's called panchromatic film. We had colour photography from there um, 
and there were a, a myriad of ways that that was done and some of them very very clever um, and you can do, still do this yourself today if you've got a film camera and you're shooting black and white shoot a scene with a red, uh, a red green and a blue filter on the front then combine those uh, say in Photoshop and you will be able to make a colour image from a black and white image uh, and essentially this is how colour film worked anyway I, I'm digressing so uh, we want to get um, a lot of light because the process is insensitive it's only sensitive in the blue ultraviolet so uh, something like um, an incandescent lamp so if you think about your um, white balance, so if you um, shooting outdoors and your daylight white balance at uh, 5600 kelvins, you come indoors, you turn the ceiling light on, that might only be balanced at 3200 kelvins, right? so it's much warmer. What that tells you is that there's much, much less uh, UV light, and in fact almost none. So, so that's the second kind of part of the problem. You need a lot of light, but you need a lot of light in the blue end of the spectrum. Now, one way that you might deal with this is to make yourself a, a bank of uh, fluorescent tubes. And people do this, bank of fluorescent tubes, and put black light bulbs in them. Um, but you're gonna sit your uh, clients in front of that, and that's pumping out uh, UV light. That's not necessarily very good for them. So that might not be uh, something uh, that you that that you you would want to, to do. So, but it's it's a, it's a possible. Um, another one is uh, you can get UV light. Uh, sorry, LED lights that are emitting in the blue and ultraviolet part of the spectrum, and you could make a bank of those. That's another possibility. You can get those in all kinds of powers as well. So that's a possibility. Uh, uh, and just going back to flash guns, uh, flash guns um, put out have very high intensity, very short bursts of light. And a number of people have had uh, some success with flash guns, but only at very, very high powers. So something like 4,800 watt seconds and more than one of those. Um, now I used to run studio lights that were 1500 watt second monoblocks and my word those things went off with a bang so if your client is sat in front of uh, sort of 9600 watts of strobe light um, that's a lot of light to, to pump into somebody's face and typically they're very very close otherwise you get too much fall off but flash guns are a possibility and the other uh, the other point is that you can pop a flash gun more than once so you could pop your 1500 watt flash gun two or three times uh, and get a result that way uh, flash guns might be something that I try at some stage um, but they're not for me right now okay so then uh, I got the idea of compact fluorescent lights now compact fluorescent lights uh, do emit in the blue UV range and uh, I was thinking that I might um, make a box and put um, a 3x3 grid or a 4x4 grid of standard household ceiling fittings standard bulb fittings in there and then put in these compact flash uh, this, these compact uh, fluorescent uh, lights and then I came across uh, this now I'm not absolutely sure whether this will do the job yet this is the Interfit F5 and I've got two of them the other one is lighting me right now now the two that I got came with uh, 10 so 5 for each fitting 35 watt um, compact fluorescent bulbs now 35 watt is what interfit rate these things at now compact flash bulbs if we do an equivalency then uh, the power of a compact flash bulb puts out roughly the same amount of light as an incandescent lamp that's about five times the wattage. So a 35 watt compact fluorescent bulb is about equivalent to 175 watt um, filament lamp. 
Now, if you imagine one of those in the old days in your living room, you turn that on, it's like the sun. A 175 watt bulb is pretty bright. And that's just one of them. <clears throat> so you put five of those in there, then you've got over 800 watts. Double it, about 1600 watts equivalent. Okay? That won't be enough. So what I'm going to do, this is a little bit of a risk, but I'm going to give it a go. These, these were absolutely dirt cheap. I paid about £50 for the two of them and two stands and all those bulbs uh, on eBay. And uh, even though three of the bulbs came, they were smashed because they'd been... <laughs> <laughs> they'd been wrapped in one return of bubble wrap and placed in this hard plastic case right next to the metal stands. There was no way they were going to arrive <laughs> intact. Um, the guy offered me uh, um, a partial refund against that, but I couldn't take his money because I only paid 50 quid for the things in the first place. Anyway, so... I've got these, now what I'm going to do is replace the 35 watt bulbs with 85 watt bulbs. Now an 85 watt bulb is there for about 420 watts, so 5 of them is 2.1 kilowatt equivalent to an incandescent light. Now that's very bright and I've got two of them so I'd have equivalent of about 4 kilowatts from these, 80, from these bank of 5 85 watt bulbs on each side. Now, I don't know whether these fittings will survive that, uh, that amount of power. 585 watt bulbs is 425 watts pulled through here. May well be way too much for it. Um, in which case, I've wasted 50 quid. But that's, that's the attempt that I'm going to make. If that doesn't work, then what I'm going to do is go back to the original plan and make myself two panels of... Uh, three but probably three by three um, at, at that rate so nine in each panel and you can get these at 135 watts each so if you if you had a panel of nine I might make a panel of nine and a panel of four to give me a main light and a fill light but a panel of nine at 135 watts five times is what is that, 600 and about 700 watts by nine is uh, whatever that is, uh, 505.6 equivalent, 5.6 kilowatts. If I've got my sums right there. Uh, yep, 5.6 kilowatts equivalent, so that's gonna be mighty bright. Uh, and then the other, and the other thing that I might do here is put a set of five 85 watt bulbs in here to give me two kilowatts and stay with the 800 watts in the other one uh, to give me a combined of about three kilowatts but a main light and a fill light just the same and these give out a reasonable amount of uh, blue and UV so that's that's the route I'm going to take uh, initially and I'm going to see what kind of uh, exposures I get. If, I, if my exposure is um, is seconds, if I can get an exposure of uh, sort of four to eight seconds, I'm going to call that uh, doable. If it's turning out to be 30 seconds a minute, that's going to be too long. And then I'll have to go uh, to plan B, which is the panels. Now, uh, of course, I will have these, so I can also I can put hair lights in and things like that with uh, with this setup. So, in terms of lighting, that's what I intend. There are myriad possibilities. Uh, you might want to try flash. If you do try flash, I would love to hear uh, about your uh, experience of that and how that works for you. And I'm sure that people uh, viewing the channel would be mighty interested as well. Uh, I'm probably a week or two away from taking my first plates with this setup uh, and as soon as I have obviously I'll share that on a video and we'll see how the lights uh, did in fact work out. Uh, I find the LEDs uh, interesting. Uh, if you think about LEDs and you, you think about these these tiny little strips that you can get and you can cut them down, you can solder to them, there are loads of possibilities and you can get uh, the likes of 100 watt LED which is uh, huge um, 
would be blind, almost blinding. So, you, but they're very expensive. But a bank of say ten or fifteen or twenty watt LEDs um, might well give you uh, a very very good um, light, a very good lighting panel for this kind of uh, this kind of work. So lots and lots of possibilities. If you're using a particular lighting setup, uh, I, I'd really like to hear about it. I'm sure everybody else would. And I will let you know how these uh, interfits uh, work out. Uh, there, there, is, there are other companies that, uh, that, that make these five head things. Uh, this just happens to be the, the one that I got. Um, and we'll see if this can cope with 85 watt lamps. Uh, my hope is that it does, my hope is that that will give you plenty of light, uh, but we'll see. And of course, you're going to position these really close. They're going to be almost in your client's face at this kind of position here. Um, and maybe you flag your lens uh, from them uh, to prevent flare, but they're going to be really close. Uh, and just one final thought, uh, I think everybody knows about the inverse square law with, uh, with light. If you move your light twice as far away, you've only got a quarter of the light arriving at your subject. Uh, that's uh, true but not accurate. Uh, that's uh, that's a, a physics principle for point light, point light sources. So the sun is so far away from us that it behaves like a point, a point source of light. Uh, but if you've got your flash guns in a soft box and you've softened them, then your your light is not a point source. It's actually quite big. Uh, these things, all right. So these bulbs stand off here about about maybe this far, and there's a cluster of them. That's no way is that, and and they're frosted and they're fluorescent. So nowhere close to uh, a point source of light. So don't be don't be fooled by that rule of thumb okay but you do want your light as close as possible to your subject get plenty of light in there and make your image so let's I'm so excited to see how all this turns out but that those are my thoughts on uh, lighting I'd love to hear yours uh, and particularly if you've had experience of wet plate with other forms of light or even with these forms of light drop us a comment uh, below in the video okay thanks very much for watching bye for now